Hi everyone. In this video, I'll show you how to restore the brightness of a fluorescent display. I've talked about this in some of my other videos, and many of you asked in the comments to show the actual procedure. So how is it done? I promise to make a separate video about it. And here it is. Our patient today is a Pioneer CD player, model PD-S702. When I first turned it on, I realized that its display was dim. As I mentioned before, it's not as noticeable on camera, but in reality, the display is very dim. For example, this edit window is almost completely invisible. Its segments are glowing at different brightness levels. The ones with heater filaments running over them still glow somewhat decently. Other areas are extremely dim. Now, for comparison, I'll bring in another player, model PD7300, and show you what the display should look like. Here we have two units for comparison, the Pioneer PDS-702 from 1993 and the PD-7300 from 1989. Just look at the difference in display brightness. Again, it's not as obvious on camera, but in real life, the difference is huge. The older model is actually four years older. I think that was four years of active use but the display still shines like new. As for the PD-S702, you can see for yourself, it's dim. I slightly reduced the exposure, and now the difference is clearly visible. The top display looks great, while the bottom one is very, very dim. Now I'll show you how to fix it. To carry out the restoration procedure, we need access to the display. We have to open up the unit, remove the front panel, and take out the circuit board with the display from the front panel. Without further ado, let's quickly disassemble it, detach the front panel, remove the board, and get full access to the display. The front panel is off, now we'll flip it over and remove the circuit board with the display. To remove the board, we first need to take off the headphone jack and output level control assembly. The front panel is removed and we've taken the board out of it. Right away, I was bothered by the fact that the display is mounted crookedly. I noticed it during the first power run. Feels like someone has already been in here. Right here, I also see a rusty button. It doesn't press very well. And the display is mounted crooked. See that metal bracket behind it? It's tilted downward like this. We're going to fix all that now and move on to the restoration. That's much better. Now we're going to spend a couple of minutes on some boring theory, and then we'll get into the actual hands-on part. So how does a fluorescent display actually work? A vacuum fluorescent display has a heater filament, which also serves as the cathode. You can see it here. These are the very thin wires. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. They run across the entire surface of the display. A heater voltage is applied to these filaments. Usually, this is an AC voltage. It's applied to the outermost pins of the display on the left and right sides. In this case, the voltage is 3.6 volts. At the same time, the filament also acts as a cathode because a negative voltage of negative 26 volts is applied to one of its ends. So what happens next? When voltage is applied to the filament, it heats up and starts emitting electrons. 
Electrons fly off from these wires in all directions, including downward toward the display segments. The display segments are coated with phosphor and connected to pins that receive anode voltage from the controller. There are also grids connected to the controller pins. In this case, the segments and grids are given zero volts or ground. Since the cathode is at negative 26 volts, there's a positive potential difference. When a particular segment and its grid are grounded, the segment lights up because electrons are hitting it from above. But why do these displays get dimmer over time? Why does the display in the older CD player, which is four years older, still shine brightly while this one has faded? The problem lies in this power button. I'll explain why right now. Older models have a mechanical power switch. The mechanical power switch completely disconnects the transformer and with it, the whole device. When the mechanical power switch was replaced by an electronic one with a standby mode, the transformer stopped disconnecting from the mains. The filament of the display is directly connected to the transformer winding. All devices connected to the mains in standby mode continuously powered the filament, causing the displays to fade over time. There are several ways to restore it, or rather, attempts to restore it. The most crude option is to increase the filament voltage. For example, applying 4 volts instead of 3.6 volts to these pins. But first of all, this is impossible because the pins are directly connected to the transformer winding and there's no other source for the voltage. Secondly, it would accelerate the complete degradation of the filaments, causing them to burn out entirely. This is a barbaric method and should not be used. There's another way. One clever person said, guys, what if over time, the filament gets covered with some oxide. What if oxidation happens? I honestly don't understand how oxidation could happen inside a vacuum display. But nonetheless, he said, what if the filament is covered with some kind of film that hinders emission, weakens it? If we try to burn off this film, the emission will recover. He suggested the following. A voltage of about two or three times the nominal value is applied to the filament. The filament heats up, starts glowing with an orange light, and in this way, the external film or coating is burned off. After that, the emission is restored. I won't claim it is fully restored 100%, since it is impossible to verify, but it is proven in practice that it partially, to a large extent, recovers and approaches its original value. So now we will perform the restoration procedure. We will apply a voltage of about nine to 10 volts to the filament and leave it in this mode for about 10 to 15 seconds. I'll tell you right away that this procedure can lead to the complete failure of the display. If you decide to repeat this, do so at your own risk. Our circuit is assembled. Now I'll explain everything to you. I don't have a laboratory power supply, so I'm using a step-down converter and a 15-volt power supply. The step-down converter is currently set to 3.5 volts, which is the nominal filament voltage. Now we turn it on and gradually increase the filament voltage to 10 volts. We will observe what happens. I will turn off the lights so we can better observe the brightness of the filament. Power is connected. The step-down converter is currently set to 3.5 volts. You see, right? We slowly begin increasing the voltage to 10 volts. And observe the filament. There's already a faint glow. At 5 volts. 6 volts. The glow is already visible. We continue to increase it. You can safely increase it to 9 volts, nothing will happen. At 9 volts, we can already see a bright orange glow. We'll increase the voltage to 10.5 volts and leave it in that state for 10 to 15 seconds.
15 seconds have passed. We can turn it off now. Now, let's put everything back together and check the result. We connect the front panel ribbon cables. Let's check it out. We turn on the power and see what we got. This is the picture we have now. I'll say right away, it's better, but not exactly perfect. Let's turn on the PD7300 as well and see. The difference is still noticeable, and the bottom display glows brighter than the top one. But there is still a noticeable positive effect. In any case, the effect of this procedure is individual for each specific display. In some displays, the filament degrades. In other displays, the phosphor degrades, and nothing can help there. But nevertheless, there is a positive effect. The image on the display has become significantly brighter. This is the small video I made. Let me know in the comments if this video was helpful to you. If it was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And that's all from me. Bye, everyone.